Alrighty, here we are with the last section of your chapter four uh, experience here. Okay, we're looking at applying the exponent laws. So what you're going to get is a bunch of questions here that involve a series of steps uh, involving the exponent laws and some of the basic rules that we've seen with law, uh, exponents. So fractional exponents, what we call rational exponents, negative exponents, okay? Uh, and the exponent laws. So here what we're going to start off with is a brief review of all the exponent laws. Now when I say brief, this is brief. Okay, this is a summary of all the exponent laws. This one here has a name. It's called the product law because when you multiply with the same base, you add the exponents. This one here is called the quotient law or some may call it the division law, because when you divide with the same base, you subtract the exponents. This people call the power to a power law, okay, or a power law. If you have x to the a, all to the power of b, we multiply those exponents, okay? And if you have, this is the distribution law, I guess you can think of it in a certain way, that if you have xy to the power of a, right, that's gonna equal x, to the power of a, y to the power of a. And similarly here, if you've got a fraction to a power, well then you can apply that power to both the top and the bottom. Here are a couple of very important points. Anything to the power of zero is one. We just dealt with negative exponents, right? So that's negative exponents. And then uh, this is another example of negative exponents where you just find the reciprocal, okay? So all this stuff should be somewhat fresh in your brain. What I'd like to do is maybe just give you a quick example of each one. So this one, for example, if I had 3 to the power of 5 times 3 to the power of 2, that's 3 to the power of 7. What about if I had 3 to the power of 5 times 3 to the power of negative 2? Well, when you add 5 and negative 2, you get 3 to the power of 3, okay? So that is that one. Let's look at the next. Well, if I have 3 to the power of 5 divided by 3 to the power of 2, that's going to be 3 to the power of 5 minus 2, which is 3. And similarly, if you use an exponent here that's negative, what's going to happen here? Oh, sorry, divided by. So divided by, same base, 5 minus a minus 2 is a plus, so it's actually 3 to the power of 7. Okay? This one here is what I wanted to show you quickly. See if you can make some sense of it. We've seen this happen in a lot of different ways, right? If I have uh, 3 to the power of 2 to the power of 4, well, that means that I've got 3 times 3, 3 times 3, 3 times 3, 3 times 3. I've got 4 3 squares, which gives me 8 total. So you multiply those, it's 3 to the power of 8. Not the one I was actually thinking of when I said I wanted to show you something. This is the one I'm referring to. All right, so this is crucial. If you have something like 2x to the power of 3, you have to understand that that's 2 to the power of 3x to the power of 3. You, you distribute or you put that 3 on each of those things. Okay, now it could be two variables as well, but it could be a constant and a variable. Okay, it could be uh, 3x squared y to the power of 4 all to the power of 3. Okay, well that would be 3 to the power of 3 x squared to the power of 3, and then y to the power of 4 to the power of 3. Well, 3 cubed is 27. This is x to the power of 6, and this is y to the power of 12. Okay? Um, similarly, uh, in this one, uh, we break it down into a couple different things. So if I have 2 over 5 all to the power of 3, that's 2 to the power of 3, 5 to the power of 3, which is 8 over 125. Okay? Negative exponents we just dealt with in the previous section, so please have a look at those. Now, uh, only thing that's going to work here, guys, is if I actually give you some examples. So let's have a look and see if you guys can follow through these with me. Okay? 0 0.3 to the power of negative 3. Okay? Well, um, that's going to be a couple different ways we can look at that. That's going to be 3 tenths to the power of negative 3 or 10 over 3 to the power of positive 3, right? Well, we don't need to deal with that right now, actually. Sorry. We can simplify this first. Before we start dealing, I just made it more complicated. Before we start dealing with that, let's sort this out. This is going to be 0 0.3 to the power of what? You're multiplying. So you add the exponents. Negative 3 
plus 5 is 2, right? Negative 3 plus 5 is positive 2. So when you multiply this out, hopefully you can see that it's going to be 0 0.09 is going to be your answer, right? 0.3 times 0.3. All right. Well, I guess the idea here, yes, is absolutely simplify these as much as you can. All right. So this is going to be negative 3 halves. We multiply these to the negative 8 times negative 3 halves to the power of 6. Right? Okay. Well, we can simplify this even further, right? This is going to be negative 3 halves. Well, add the exponents. Minus 8 plus 6 is negative 2. That gives me negative 3 halves to the power of negative 2, which is negative 2 thirds to the power of positive 2, which is 4 over 9. Where'd the negative go, Mr. Gregor? Where'd the negative go? Well, hopefully you understand that if you square a negative, it becomes positive. Boom. There's your answer. All right? Let's move down. A couple more. These are looking kind of funky, but notice that they all have the same base, so it shouldn't cause you too much grief. Same base being multiplied, so what you've got going on here is 1.4 to the power of 3 plus 4, which is 7, all over. 1.4 to the power of negative 2. Now we have a division, so this is going to be 1.4 to the power of 7 minus a minus 2. And a 7 minus a minus 2 is a 9. So what you have here is 1.4 to the power of 9. If you wanted to evaluate that, 1.4 to the power of 9. Ah, uh, 1.4 to the power of 9. Boom. You get 20.66, okay? But we can leave it like that. That's all good. Let's have a look over here. Hmm. You want to simplify inside the brackets first, or you want to deal with that exponent up there? I would suggest simplifying in the brackets first. This is going to be base, same base. One third plus five thirds is what I have here. One third, right? One third plus five thirds, if you can remember fractions, is six thirds, which is two. So that becomes seven squared on the bottom. And this whole thing is to the power of six. Now, you might want to do something here. You might want to, sub you can subtract these first, or you can put them to the power of six first. Uh, subtraction with fractions and whole numbers can be a little funky. Why don't we just multiply this out first? This is going to be the same as 7 to the power of 2 thirds to the power of 6 over 7 squared to the power of 6. This is multiplication. So you're going to have 2 thirds times 6, which is over 1. Hopefully you remember how to multiply fractions. That's 2 times 6 is 12. 3 times 1 is 3, so it's 4. This becomes 7 to the power of 4. And this is 7 to the power of 12 on the bottom. Now, you've simplified it quite a ways. You're still dividing. Now we can subtract the exponents. So it's 7 to the power of 4 minus 12, which is negative 8. And I'd leave it like that. If you really want to find an answer, 7 to the power of negative 8. Whatever you want to do, I don't really care, okay? Super small number. I am happy if you get to this point right here. Ladies and gentlemen, I know that these are causing you possibly a little bit of grief. Let's just keep trying. Exponent laws, exponent laws, exponent laws. Multiplying here. I can't combine these. They're different bases. But I can combine this x with this x. This is going to be x cubed times x squared. And then it's going to be y squared times y to the negative 4. Right? Well then, add these up. x to the power of 5. This is going to be y the power of negative 2. You can write it like this if you want, x to the power of 5, y to the negative 2. Think about how else you could write this. y to the negative 2 means that it's going to be positive, it's on the bottom. So it could be x to the power of 5 over y squared. This, in my opinion, is a much prettier way of writing that. Okay, so this simplifies to that. Now let's look at this last one on this page. i got a few more that I want to show you. But let's keep going with these. We haven't dealt with any rational. Oh, yeah, no, we have. I'm sorry. And we've got negatives in here, too. Awesome. Anyways, so when we've got this situation here, we've got numbers, we've got A's, and we've got B's. I highly suggest you break it down and deal with them separately. So 10 over 2 is 5, right? And then we look at the A. We're dividing. So 5 minus 2 is 3. And then the B, 3 minus a minus 2 is a plus. So 3 plus 2 is 5. Boom. Bam! That's pretty quick and easy, right? So that's a bunch of these questions. 
We'll look at a few more. Let's see where it is. Do I have them here? Oh, yes. Do I have some more for you? Let's check these out. So, how am I going to do this? Whoops, you can't see them. That doesn't help. So, this is like the cube root, right? So, this is a on everything. So, it's going to be 8 to the power of 1 third. A, 3 times a third. Hopefully, you can see. Let's do it 3 times 1 third. And then B, 6 times 1 third. All right? This is the same as the cube root. Hopefully, you remember that that's the same as that, right? And 3 times a third is just 8 to the power of 1. 6 times 1 is 6 over 3 is 2, so it's b squared. This is 2 a b squared, and you're done. All right? I know this might be a little funky for some of you, but hopefully with a little bit of practice, it'll start making some sense. X's and Y's. We're multiplying. It means we add the exponents. This is going to be x to the power of 3 halves plus 1 half. And then y to the power of 2 plus a negative 1. Right? Now, uh, 3 halves plus 1 half is x to the power of 4 halves times, this is 2 minus 1, so it's negative 1. 4 over 2 is 2, so this is x squared. This is y to the negative 1. This is fine as an answer, but I want you to understand that it's the same as that. Y negative 1 becomes positive 1 on the bottom. The exponent of 1 we don't necessarily need to write. And there you are. A couple more. A couple more. Let's keep going here. Uh, again, so notice that we have numbers, right? And then A's and then B's. So let's split it up. We got 4 over 2. Let's do that one. And then A to the negative 2, A squared. Let's do that one separately. And then B to the 2 thirds. Sorry, let's fix that. B to the 2 thirds over B to the one third. Maybe it helps if we write it out like that. I'm sorry if you can't see this exponent here very well. Let me sharpen my pencil a little bit and then we'll go two thirds up here. Okay, so let's deal with them separately, right? Four over two is two. Dividing, so you subtract minus two minus two is a to the minus four. And then we have b. Two thirds minus one third is one third. Okay, so this isn't a bad answer, but we can write it out in a better way, right? The negative four will be a positive on the bottom, so we can put it down there, and then you can write the cube root of b if you like. This is a good answer. This is still the right answer too, okay? It's just this is a nice sort of condensed version of the answer. Last one before I do a couple of uh, applications here, a couple different types of questions. Let's have a look at this bad boy, right? So this is the same as one half. So it's one half on the top, one half on the bottom. So it's 100a to the power of one half all over 25a to the fifth, b to the negative one half, all to the one half, right? So now this is the same as saying the square root of this whole thing or uh, the square root of 100 and the square root of a, right? So understand that 100 to a half is the square root of 100, which is equal to 10. That becomes 10, a to the 1 half. That's the top. Simplify it, right? Now the bottom. That means 1 half on everything. So 25 to the 1 half. And then a, 5 times 1 half is 5 halves. And then b, negative 1 half times 1 half is uh, negative 1 quarter. Right? Ugly exponents, ugly exponents, I'll give you that, but still doable nonetheless, okay? So the square root now 25 to the 1 half is the square root of 25, which is just 5. So this becomes 10, um, sorry, hold on, a to the 1 half all over 5, a to the 5 halves, uh, b to the negative 1 quarter. So now, boom, that simplifies to 2. 1 half minus 5 halves, 1 half minus 5 halves is negative 4 halves, which is negative 2. So I have a negative 2 on top, and I have b negative 1 quarter on the bottom. This last step, folks, let's think about what we can do. Negative exponents on the top and the bottom. 
I can rewrite them as positive exponents if they go to their other location. So if the a goes down here, it will have a positive exponent. If the negative here goes up to the top, it will have a positive exponent. This is absolutely perfect. If you can rewrite it like this, fourth root of b all over a squared, that's even better, right? There we go. Those are a lot of nasty questions, okay? A lot of nasty questions, but I think with a little bit of practice, you might actually be able to sort them out. Here's a couple more. These are dead easy. You've already done them. I don't want to say dead easy because maybe you've had uh, difficulty with them, but you know how to do this. You've already done them. If you find the formula, I'll tell you, it's V is equal to four thirds pi r cubed, okay? There's the formula. So try and solve it, pause it, try to solve. We know the volume is 425. That's equal to 4 thirds pi r cubed. We spent quite a bit of time solving algebra, doing algebraic equations. You need to be able to figure this out, guys. Okay? So what this ends up being, if you want to get rid of the 3, you multiply by the 3. You want to get rid of the 4, you divide by the 4. You want to get rid of the pi, you divide by the pi. You get r cubed. So what you have now is 3 times 425, right, divided by, let's go uh, 4 pi, boom. So what I have here is r cubed is equal to 101.46. Now you've solved this before. You can either do the cube root or you can do um, the power of one third, right? Look, power of one third. That's going to give me one, sorry, r to the power of one, right? So you do this to the power of one third, which is the same as the cube root. So I don't really care how you do it, but I'm going to go to the power of one divided by three, and you end up with an answer of 4.7, whatever it is, centimeters, meters, whatever meters in this case, okay? Now, last one, last one, I promise I'll stop torturing you. Cone with equal radius and height has a volume of 18 centimeters cubed. Find the radius and the height. Again, I will give you the formula, which is pi r squared h divided by 3. Because remember, it's the area of the bottom, which is pi r squared, times the height divided by 3. Now, what they're saying, however, is that the radius and the height are the same. So if my thing looks like this, I've got a fat-ass cone like that, right? where my r and my height are the same. So you can basically say r is equal to h. So in this case, if r is equal to h, h is equal to r. So my formula now would be pi r cubed over 3, right? Because if that's an r, r times r squared is r cubed. Now we have a volume of 18 is equal to pi r cubed over 3. How are you going to get rid of that 3? You multiply it out, right? So 18 times 3, what is it? 54. 54 is equal to pi r cubed. You need to get rid of the pi. Divide by pi. Divide by pi. r cubed is equal to 54 divided by pi. Boom. Is 17.2. So I got 17.2. Now we're looking to find r. Right? You can look at it as the cube root of 17.2. You can look at it as 17.2 to the power of one third. I do not care how you do this, uh, as long as you get the right answer, which is 2.6. All right, ladies and gentlemen, a lot of nasty equations in there, and we end, up, uh, end with a couple of pretty simple ones that you've already done, but they involve that algebra stuff that you guys hate so much, okay, manipulating equations, rearranging them, and then cube rooting or power of one-third. Any questions, folks? You know what to do.